Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. I want to talk to you today about dealing with doubt. Dealing with doubt. Doubt can't be ignored. And, and this is just the whole message. You can't ignore those thoughts you're having. You, you, can't, just, you can't just ignore them. Uh, just like hope is a prerequisite, that's a big word for me to spit out, prerequisite to faith. Hope comes before faith. It has to. Doubt is a prerequisite to fear and unbelief. It'll start with doubt. And if it's unchecked, and if it's not dealt with, if it's ignored, then it will develop into fear and unbelief. Really the same thing. But fear and unbelief. So it, it just can't be ignored. And you need to know doubt when you see it and when you hear it. And when I got to thinking about that, what does doubt look like? What does doubt look like? How do I know if it's a thought of doubt. It, it's pretty easy to identify. I'm going to give you one really good way to identify doubt. It usually looks like a question. Is that really true? Would God really heal me? Is prosperity really for is that really godly? Can we believe God for money? Can we believe God for promotion? Are, is my past really gone? Because I still have these thoughts. You see, doubt usually looks like a question. And it is waiting for you to answer or not answer. And not answering is an answer. <laughs> it's an answer. You, you've got to be able to identify doubt because it's a threat. You know, we went through 10 hours of security training, safety training. Did it do it? Did, I just, did it just skip a beat or was that just me? I think it did. We went through about 10 hours of safety training uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. And we talked a lot about threats. How to identify a threat. Doubt is a threat against your covenant provision that's given to you by God. It's a threat. Doubt is a thief. It will keep you from receiving what God has for you. Whether that's you out ministering and you need your faith in operation, can you really lay hands on the sick and them recover? You? Me? It's going gonna, it's gonna to come and it's going to question what God has called us to do and what he's provided for us. And it'll rob us of it if we don't answer it. Here, here's the danger of doubt. Doubt develop, develop turns into fear. And fear is a force just like faith is. I remember dad talking a lot about fear and faith both being like magnets. A magnet has a, a, a force to it, a pull to it, right? You put a magnet next to something metal, and it, it starts drawing. You can feel it. You can feel it drawing that thing to it. When you closer you get, kind of the stronger the pull. Well, that's great when we're talking about faith. Because when we find something in the Word of God that it says we can do, or who it says you are in Christ Jesus, and you believe it, your faith, even though you may not feel it on the inside... Your faith will draw that confidence to you and you will become who he said you will become. On the opposite side, fear is a magnet. And insecurity is fear. What you're afraid you cannot do, you're, it draws those insecurities into your personality. You know it's true. Even the natural knows it's true. Business seminars teach you to be positive, to set quotas, uh, to set goals. Why? Because they want you to draw that to you. 
they got that principle from the word of God. If, if Zig Ziglar back in the day didn't teach us anything else, he tied the faith confession message to business. You can look him up. It's, you have to be pretty old to know who he is. Just saying, Mark and I shaking our head. We know him. Faith and fear are both spiritual principles. And they are at work. It's not if you work them. They are at work. Faith or fear, it is at work on whatever you're dealing with. That's why doubt has to be dealt with while it's just a thought. Okay? While it's just a thought. I love a quote from uh, Charles Capps, and y'all have heard me say it before, but we have so many new people. I don't want to think that you know something. Charles Capps said this, and it's one of the most powerful little simple quotes. But where the question mark is, is where your faith stops. Where the question mark is, that's where your faith stops. If you have a question about it, then you do not have faith for it. The good news is, a question can be answered. And it is answered. Your, your Bible is full of answers to those questions that you have about you or about your ministry, whatever it is that you're having thoughts of doubt about, you have the answers. And, you know, if in doubt, just read about Jesus. He, his life answered our questions. It answered who you are in Christ. You're a child of God. The scripture says that. Look at Jesus and see what that looks like. Can you lay hands on the sick? If you can't say yes, then you know where you need to look. Read the scriptures about you being now. We are sons and daughters. Now we are the children of God. And then look at Jesus, who was the son of God. See what he did and read the very statement that he said. That if we believe on him and we had faith, we could do the things that he did and greater things shall we do? Amen. Now that takes some mind renewal. And that's what we're talking about. Out with the old, Romans 12, in with the new, right? We got to change how we think. We got to get rid of, rid of our, our doubts. We got to get rid of our question marks. And that's, that's what I want us to work on this week in particular. Romans 10, 17. Uh, if you can't quote this, you hadn't been here long, stick around. You'll be able to quote it pretty quickly. So then faith comes by and hearing. That's right. Faith comes by hearing. You know why you don't believe? It's just because you hadn't heard it enough. You just haven't received it yet. You know, when somebody tells you something over and over and over again, if you keep listening, you will believe it. And I can tell you, the, the world wars that took place in our grandparents' generation, our great-grandparents' generation, they used something called propaganda. It was, it was huge, especially wasn't it Germany that used a lot of propaganda. And they made people believe a lie. By what they said to them. Not once. They saturated their society with posters, with, with radio words. They saturated their society with what they wanted their society to believe. And there's a whole lot of it going on right now. So we have to be careful what we're hearing. And if we want faith operative in our life, then we saturate our atmosphere with what God said. And you know, I love a movement that's, that's on right now. It has been for probably the last five or six years, even in decorating. Thank God for Hobby Lobby. Amen. My husband actually said amen. <laughs> He'll get there, honey. We've, we've been married a while. You just keep at work. SJ got you under control. What, and, and it's not just Hobby Lobby. You can go in any store 
and find decor that makes faith statements. Scripture even. Bass Pro Shop. Oh, Lordy. That was not my husband. It's true. You know what? The market has discovered the power of words. And, and, and what, if, what they've got to know from this, from the way this stuff is selling like hotcakes for at least five years, is that we long for positive input. We long for it. When will the movies learn that? We want a good story. We want, we want the good guys to win. We, we need positive. We were created that way. God created us to soak up positive input so that what we, the good, out of the good treasure of our heart, we could bring forth good things. But see, when, when society, oh, can I get just a wee bit political? Okay, thanks. I am against violence. But... I am a constitutionalist. I believe in it. Amen. I have a right to bear arms. I, I'm, I'm going to stay that way. What's wrong with this society is not a weapon. It's a heart problem. And I don't, I don't, I don't think kids ought to be able to buy ARs. Okay? I think it needs to be responsible adult that handles a, something that powerful, but also don't think some kids need to be behind the wheel of a car. You know? So it's a heart issue. And when we are feeling the youth of America and the adults, because some of you guys are just as bad, with violent games where it is points to kill somebody. Thank you. What do we expect to come out of their actions? Mariah, you deal with kids all the time, coach. They'll beat you in the head with a stick if they don't have a gun. They can go online and find out how to build a bomb. Fourth of July, they can buy enough gunpowder out of fireworks to build something to destroy people. When are we going to start putting the blame where the blame is? And parents, you go through your house and you clean out those video games. You put blocks on your television on shows that do not need to be seen. We are, we are in constant awe of what we see advertised on television. Just absolute... We don't, sometimes we just look at each other like, that's a show and people watch it? And companies... Pay money to support it? Out of the good treasure, the good deposit of your heart comes good things. But out of the evil deposit, you can't listen to violent music, sexually explicit music. How many rapes do your children, well, maybe not children, well, maybe if you leave your TV on all the time, witness in a year on your television. Folks, we gotta, we gotta be smarter than that. We gotta saturate our atmosphere with what we want seeded into the next generation. And it'll make, I'm telling you, it'll make a difference in your home even if it's not that way out in the world. Romans 10. Romans 10, 17 out of the Passion Translation says something like this. I didn't write it down word for word. But faith is birthed in a heart that responds to the anointed word of God. I like that. Faith is birthed to, in a heart that responds to the... means I hear the word and I want it. 
I hear the word and I want that. I want to I wanna be to the place that no matter what walks up in front of me, Eric, in the form of sickness and disease does not phase my thought on you, the believer, can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. A lot of doubts go through your head. And they will. But if your heart is full of faith, they'll just go through your head. Right? Jesus never minded answering questions that came from hearts wanting answers. Doubt doesn't scare him. If you're willing to talk to him about what you're dealing with, he'll give you answers. You remember the dad that came to Jesus and um, Jesus told him, he said, just believe, you know, be quiet and just believe. And the father said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. You know, Jesus didn't mind that at all. Because faith can be birthed in that heart. He heard that Jesus would heal. And he was, ha- he was being bombarded. This is, this is a dad here dealing with a child. So there's a lot of, lot of emotional stuff going on up there. But Jesus didn't mind him saying that. Jesus helped him with that. And he answered those questions so that he could heal. We'll look at another example in Mark 1, if you want to turn there. I love this about Jesus. Now, there were some people who asked questions that he didn't get great joy out of. They were mainly the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the religious bunch who were asking questions for the wrong reasons. But a, a person coming to him who, who heard about Jesus but didn't have faith developed, who had question, he did not mind those questions at all. And this is a great example. Mark 1 verse 40 says, A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. What's the question? The question's not, will you heal me? Can you heal me? It's, will you heal me? Not, can you? He knew Jesus could. He had heard of Jesus. He had heard of his healing power. He knew he could, but would he heal me? And isn't that true with all of us? There's, there's, There's no doubts about his power. It's when it comes to me that there's doubt. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion. Didn't make you mad at all. Jesus, filled with compassion, reached out his hand and he touched the man. Remember, the man had leprosy, right? So Jesus touched him. That that pretty well shows a yes right there, doesn't it? Jesus said, I am willing. He had to answer the question, before the man could receive his healing. Capability was there all the time. The willingness was there all the time. But as long as there was a question mark, nothing was happening. You remember Jesus went into, um, was it his hometown where he went into? Where he, he healed some sickly folks, it says. But he, he couldn't do any great works there because of their... Because of their unbelief. Had nothing to do with his willingness. He needs faith. He needs you to believe. And if you can believe, you can have. I mean, it's, it's a fact. It, it's written in Mark 11. If you can believe, you can have. If God promised it, he's already said yes to it. All the promises of God are... and. He said the yes, I say the so be it. That's what amen means. He says yes, and I say amen. Let it be. So here he gives him his yes, I'm willing. He answered the question, and then he said, be clean. It was just, I hate to say it's that simple, but it's that simple. I'm willing. Be clean. 
And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Nothing could happen until the question mark was removed and Jesus answered it with his word. The same way he's going to answer any doubt that you have, he's going to answer it with his word. And, and that's what we have to come back to. Faith came, doubt was removed, healing could come. Y'all probably heard this statement. I've seen it on a few decorative things. When doubt knocks and faith answers, nobody's there. Faith's going to knock, but if faith answers, if you answer in faith, if you answer that doubt in your head with faith, the doubt leaves. I mean, it's just the way it works. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It's just these heads are kind of powerful things sometimes. In Mark 11, we mentioned it a while ago. You can turn there if you want to. In Mark 11, Jesus and the disciples, remember, were walking uh, into town, and there was the fig tree. Remember, Jesus cursed the fig tree. You remember that story? And they went on into town, and it didn't look like anything was happening, but something had happened because when Jesus cursed it, it started dying at the root, but they just couldn't see that his word was working yet. And so they went on into town, and they come back out, and they walk by the tree again. I think it was the next morning, if I remember correctly. And the disciples are like, what? Because now they can see it. It started, it started withering away. And they were like, Jesus, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> that fig tree that you cursed, it's withering away. And Jesus' response, I could just, it, if Jesus didn't do an eye roll right here, he said to them, have faith in God. Most, some Bibles say, have the faith of God. Operate in faith like God. This is the way God operates. Have the faith of God. Your margin of your Bible probably says it that way. Have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever, don't you love that word? Because that makes it me. It can be me. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not. Okay. you got to get that whole phrase. Because I believe that shall not doubt in his heart is huge it doesn't say who doesn't have a thought of doubt because i promise you if you if you jump off into anything in faith your head's going to give you trouble right because it, it's the 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 mind is connected to the senses the five physical senses what it feels what it hears what it smells what it tastes, it, it's connected to the senses. And so the senses are feeding your mind information. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. But your throat feels like it's raw. And it's feeding your mind, help, we're in trouble over here. You know, strep throat, all these things might be coming to your mind. And so at that moment, you have a thought of doubt. But that doesn't mean that you have doubt in your heart. I like the phrase, if you take it to heart, it means you take it in. Was it Hagen that used to say birds may fly over your head, but that doesn't mean you have to let them make a nest in your hair? Thoughts may come through your head, but you don't have to let them nest there. You don't have to let them stay. I believe that's what he's speaking of here. If you doubt not in your heart, but shall believe, if you choose to believe, over the doubts, you choose to believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I know it still amazes me. A passage still amazes me. It, it still makes my head spin sometimes to think that you can have whatsoever you say if the above. 
Today we're dealing with doubt, and we won't get into our words today. We've been t- we started a series on Wednesday nights about the power of words. Mark's going to pick up this Wednesday night on it, and it's really declaring and establishing things. It's really got this stirred up in me about the power of words. All right, so we have to talk about this doubting in the heart when we talk about taking care of doubt. Um, When I think of shout not doubt in his heart, I think about doubt that's entertained. Thoughts of doubt that we, we, we entertain. We, we, we go through the what ifs and the, the buts and all those things in our head. That's entertaining doubt. That's, that's producing more doubt, right? It's developing doubt. Doubt not in his heart to me means undealt with doubt. I didn't deal with that thought. Look, you you can't ignore it because it's not going to go away. Doubt's not going to go away. We have to deal with it if we don't want it to develop. It's it's a seed of something and we don't want to take it to heart. Uh, It could also be unanswered questions. Like I said, good news. We can get answers. It get, uh, doubt in my heart can also be a word I've not responded to yet. God's word that I haven't, I haven't said okay to yet. I haven't accepted it yet. And, and, and that's okay too. That's solvable. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I just need his word on it with a heart to respond to it. The scripture talks about people hearing the word but not mixing it with faith and you can sit here on the pew and hear the word but if you don't choose to believe it then you haven't mixed it with faith and it won't produce well I've heard I've I've been listening I've had the healing scriptures on for 24 hours seven days a week and I'm not feeling any better you got to respond to the word you got to choose. That's mine. you got to take possession of it. You've got to take the word to heart if you want the word to produce in your heart. And so it's not just about hearing. It's, it's about, in fact, one, I can't remember which version of, of Romans 10, 17 I read that said it. It's about, it may have been NIV. It's about getting the message of the word, what it's saying to you, and then accepting that and taking it to heart. Um, remember, remember this. This is the way, this is the way God put it to me. Faith ends the thought with a period. And there is no question. Faith ends the thought with a period. If it's not a period, if it's a question mark, we're not in faith yet. We just need some more. We need to concentrate on that area more. But faith ends the thought with a period, and there is no question. Doubt questions, but faith will make a statement. Faith will make a statement. Doubt questions, but faith, it will make a statement. You will be speaking something if you're in faith. You will speak it. And when doubt tries to come, you'll speak. You'll speak the word. I was listening to Gloria Copeland uh, one day this week on one of her healing schools. Of course, a lot of those are old, but I I kind of enjoy the old ones. Um, And she said this. She said, what if the thing you're believing for, what if the thing persists after you've put your faith on it? What if, what if it persists? What if what you're speaking to persist? Her answer was, I persist. What if I don't feel better? What if it doesn't go away? What if this doesn't happen? What if that doesn't happen? I persist. Faith has to have a tenacity to it. It has to outlast your doubts. It's got to be stronger than your doubts. And so, you know, does this take effort? Yes. Yes, it does. But my goodness, you go up, you get up and go to work every day. Well, some of you do. Some of you garden. 
Um, it, it doesn't just happen. I saw Cindy and Brad out at the farmer's market selling their, their beautiful produce. It didn't just happen. If you want the fruit, you till the ground, you sow the seed, you keep out the weeds, you water it, you develop it, you grow it, you get a harvest. And, and some people want to just... Some people want to just pray and God beam something down on you. He sent Jesus who provided and made everything in the kingdom available to you. In fact, he said anything that has to do with life and godliness, it's yours. He's not up there making a yes or no answer up for you based on your behavior, all he needs is faith. And, and that's tough for religious people to wrap their head around because they want it to be deserved. They want to work for it. You do work for it. You work to believe. You study. You, you get up in the morning and you, you say things that go against what you're feeling because you're choosing to believe them over what you're feeling. That can be work sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. That, that takes effort. But Jesus, is, Jesus has already opened up the whole kingdom to you. He's not going to do anything else. And I remember Dad used to say that. God's not going to do anything else. And people would just, like, all the oxygen would leave the room. A lot of that religion's gone. <laughs> he, he, Dad took about 40, 45 years and kind of zapped some of that religion out of here. But True. He did it. He healed you with Jesus. He set you free with Jesus. He anointed you with Jesus and the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came as a rushing mighty wind. All of that is in the earth and it's available. Amen. So doubts need to be dealt with if we're going to walk in what God has already provided. He's not up there saying yes or no to you. He's not up there saying yes or no to you. Anything he's promised in his word has already been provided for, and it's a yes. Now do we believe? Amen. That's the question. Amen? Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.